starting at each phase of your business can be an experience in its own. And I have been doing this a few years in coaching event designers and planners when it comes to my coaching business. And I have really found out that there are certain behaviors, milestones, beliefs, and wants and desires at each stage of their journey within their business. So in today's video, I'm gonna break apart what it's like to go from zero to multiple six figures based on the phase that you're in within the journey of your event business. So if you wanna see where you are in your phase and what it takes to get to the next one, please keep watching. Hi everyone, my name is Justine Jordan and I am an event business and marketing coach where I help event creatives just like you build a profitable business using lead generating content creation and marketing strategies to scale up your business. In each phase of your business, you are going to embark a different type of journey. And I would want to take you to see a lot of my event creatives in the event industry, what it takes to not just be in a phase, um, but what it takes to continue to grow along your journey. So let's go through the phases and I wanna share my screen to show you what each phase is and what categories within each phase I tend to focus on with my creative entrepreneurs and CEOs that join my coaching program. Welcome everyone. So I would like to go over the phases of an event business. Now I have done a YouTube live session with my subscribers. So if you are subscribed, make sure you hit that bell because I'm going live and I even have a YouTube membership where you can replay all the live sessions. So if you're interested, feel free to click the link down below this video because that's where you'll find the videos that were referring to the phases of the event business that I went a few weeks ago. Instead of breaking them down into three phases, I broke them down to four to revamp of a, an event designer when they're going through the phases and journey of their business. So <clears throat> with each phase, I named them. So the first phase is called the startup phase. And this is usually when you're just getting started. And we'll go into more details about each phase. But you're just at the startup phase. You just, you know, got the idea and you think you want to turn this into a real business, right? So this is the startup phase. The foundations phase, which is an additional phase that was added to my overall phases, <laughs> is when you're newer to the industry, but you have some foundations in place, like maybe you've gotten a few clients and these, this is the phase where we usually see a lot of people start to reach out for help. Okay. And then the building phase, which is where, um, a lot of my group coaching, um, designers are in, or they get to when they join is they have new clients every month. Um, but they definitely need to increase the quality and quantity of their events, so this is usually what we call the building phase. And the last phase, which is my favorite, <laughs> is the scaling phase. The scaling phase is when you're getting paid well, you're getting booked regularly, and you're at the point where you're ready to hire a team. So let's continue talking about each phase so that way we know where you stand on your journey. Within each phase, there are certain categories that I cover. Again, I go more in depth about this in my live session replay. So if you want it, click the link down below to join the membership. But here are the phases, um, the categories within each every phase. So the starter phase, foundation phase, building and scaling. Okay, we you, you have to definitely address the mindset at each phase. Every single phase that you go through within your event business journey is different from the lives. And even in between each phase, there's different things that, you know, when people are first entering the phase, they have a different mindset versus people who are basically leaving that phase. Okay. Also, we talk about is the designs that you have at each phase. Uh, they have to really look a certain way and do a certain thing. And, you know, it's just, it's just, as you grow, you get better with your creative skill. Another category that we focus on within each phase is definitely the price point, because let's be honest, if your designs are getting better, right, the price has to match <laughs> and you already know it has to go up. OK, so this is another category that we focus on within each phase as well. And then marketing. Marketing becomes a different strategy when it comes to your business, because at each phase, you need to do something different 
on top of what you've already built or done. So within each category, uh, each phase, we emphasize different marketing techniques for your journey at that point in time. And then the last thing is that your clients do change. This is something a lot of people don't know when it comes down to first starting up to all the way to the scaling phase. I've helped designers from each phase of their business. And uh, to be honest, the scaling phase is like everyone's favorite. It's where you really get to experience someone truly understanding your worth and willing to pay a lot of money for it. So it's exciting. I'm not going to go into what you should or should not be focusing on because I want to honor those who have been in the YouTube membership. So that way they're able to then work on it. But I do give a whole exclusive lesson that I didn't give anywhere else about what you should and shouldn't be focusing on within each category, within each phase. Mind you, at that time, the phases were only three. But it's a really monumental of what you can do within each phase and what you should and should be focused on. So that way you stay on task to growing your business versus just doing whatever. So if you're interested, make sure to hit that link down below to join. So let's dive into the starting phase. The starting phase is usually my event designs who are just beginning their journey within the event industry welcome <laughs> so let me switch my screen again and share more details about this phase all right so let's discuss the starting phase the starting phase and some qualities that go on with designers who are in this phase right they usually have a creative skill and this is something where they've known they've always been creative <laughs> they've been creative forever they just didn't, they tapped into more of the event space. Usually what I hear is that a lot of people get told their family and friends are like, hey, you should turn this into a business. And all of a sudden there's like a light bulb that goes off, right? Which is this next thing. Now they want to start a business. They know other people are doing it in the industry, right? They're watching YouTube videos and they're absorbing all the information of what it takes to get started, even practicing their craft and seeing how well they can do it. A lot of people in this stage don't, or in this phase, don't know where to begin, right? They're just consuming as much as they can when it comes down to their business and really refining and trying to create this startup business that they don't even know. Usually other attributes is that they're the first entrepreneur in their family, or this is the first time maybe someone close to them, like yourself, is actually taking on this event business seriously. And they know they want something different and they crave something different because the nine to five job is not working. Usually a lot of creative people can't withstand a nine to five job because at the end of the day, you're going to drive yourself crazy if you can't be creative. That's why I, when I was at this stage, I was being a teacher because I thought that was going to be my creative career. And instead, I was suppressed of my creativity. So I had an outlet when it came to my balloon business. And that really took off pretty well because I knew I had something to give to the world. And I genuinely love to enjoy people. So when I got to this stage or this phase, this phase, <laughs> this phase, it really was a game changer because I started to realize this is something I want to do. And this is something I want to tap into. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is sometimes there are things that are stopping a lot of designers in this phase, and it's a lot of fears. And sometimes you're unaware of those fears because each fear is covered by past experiences. One fear that definitely occurs very commonly in this phase is the fear of failing. And a lot of my creative entrepreneurs, specifically event designers and planners in the industry, they have a fear of failing. So they become very um, perfect. They, they want to be perfect. And that perfectionism, one, it does work in your favor as you grow into each phase. But in this phase of your business, it stops you. <laughs> it completely stops you. It keeps you halt. It keeps you going in circles and not really growing into the next phase. So these are the things that I tend to see a lot of event designers go through. Obviously, there is more that goes on during the phase, but this is basically a bird's eye view on what it's like to just get started and be in that starting phase. All right. Now that we learned about what the starting phase is all about and what 
my event designers and CEOs tend to go through. Now let's switch into the next phase, which is the foundation phase. Foundations was actually added to my phase. I used to only have three, but I'll give you more details and let me share my screen to go over and dive deep into what goes on in this phase. All right, so the next phase, which is a new phase that I incorporated into my world because this was a phase that we're missing um, compared to the other three. So foundations phase is a new phase. So if you're watching this, if you watch the YouTube live, if you're a YouTube membership, part of my creator squad, right? This is a new phase that I want to introduce to you guys because I think it's necessary. The foundations phase, um, there's a lot that goes on between the startup and the building. And I didn't want to forget this phase because at the end of the day, when it comes down to your when you're building and you're along your journey, there are different things that go on in between the startup and building. So foundations phase is a new phase that's added into the overall journey. This is usually when my designers and planners, they have gotten a few clients. They have figured out how to get people to pay. Sometimes it's their family and friends. Sometimes it's word of mouth. And sometimes it's new people you've never you know, met before in your in your life. And this is a really great thing because at this phase, you're basically saying that you have something people want, right? This is a really good indication to know what you're doing is working. And I want you to continue to tap into that because there's going to be a lot of challenges that come along the way. But once you have the foundation phase in place and you understanding that people want certain things that you have to offer, then you will continue to grow. Now, there's a lot of rejection, a lot of rejection at this stage of your business, phase of your business. Oh my goodness, if I say stage one more time, I probably will, I apologize. <laughs> um, But there's a lot of rejection from your clients. And when there's a lot of rejection, it makes you doubt your worth, it makes you doubt your designs, and you move a little different when you believe that these rejections are about you. Now, some people will know that when they get rejected, they're actually fine. It doesn't mean anything about them, but it does lead them into knowing, which is the third thing, that they're not making much money, okay? So maybe the fear of rejection or being rejected has nothing to do with your worth and you're very confident in what you have to offer, right? Which is usually the qualities of a foundation phase designer. Um, but you haven't figured out how much, how to make more money, right? You've gotten a few clients, right? That's part one of this phase, but you don't know how to continue making that money. And you know, you have something people want, but because you're getting a lot of rejection along your journey, you're starting to get frustrated, right? It's very frustrating when you know people want this and you know, people are willing to pay, but they're saying you're too expensive. They're saying, you know, it's priced too high or they're willing to buy the supplies and you just decorate. Like these are the things that go on in the foundations phase. I will tell you this, sometimes the qualities that I mentioned for each phase can intertwine in each of the other phases. So people who are saying you're too expensive, even if you're charging like $100 for your designs, can happen in the startup phase, right? That rejection can happen a, a that can happen over and over again. However, in the foundations phase, this is when you really hear it the most, okay? Another thing, which is the fourth thing, is that you crave consistent revenue, right? You know you want to grow this. You know people are willing to buy, but you haven't been able to figure out how to build this consistently month to month. And you're looking at this point in time, right? This is where one of my favorites. <laughs> this is when you start to realize I need help, right? You're looking for solutions. Now, the solutions might be the same as the startup phase. You're looking all online. You're maybe joining a cheap class or creative class, you know, to really build up your creative skill because you think maybe if it looks better, people are willing to pay. I'm here to tell you that's not it. <laughs> I think you do need to build your creative skill. And I think this is a great phase of your business to do so. But you're still going to hit a lot of rejection. In fact, I get in front of a lot of designers all the time. And especially if they're interested in joining my coaching program. And I look at their work and I'm like, oh my gosh, your work is beautiful. And it's because they've invested, right? They invested with shadowing a mentor or they've invested in joining a creative class to perfect their skills but they're still hitting walls of rejection, right? People are still not willing to pay, even though it's 
beautiful, right? And this is usually when I come into place. <laughs> now, again, some people in the startup phase might start looking for me as well because they don't they don't know what to do and they need some help, right? But if you skipped over that phase and you got into this phase, this is usually where I get a lot of my designers very interested and they start applying for the coaching program because they want a different solution. They know they have something to offer. They know what they do is beautiful. They just can't get the clients and they don't know what's going on or what are the loopholes of their design. So- all right, we are climbing the ladder of success. <laughs> so we got the startup phase, we got the foundation phase. Now next up is the building phase. And building phase is usually where I meet a lot of you who need help, you know, getting consistent clientele. But I won't give away too much because again, I'm gonna share my screen and go dive in even deeper because this phase is really necessary for growth and usually people can't do it alone during this phase. So. Let's switch my screen to dive even deeper in this phase. All right, the next phase, which is the building phase, right? The building phase is a very interesting phase to be in because usually by this phase, you do have someone, a mentor, that is guiding you along your path in the event industry. Um, most of the time, event designers can't get to the building phase without a mentor. And that's just me being honest. It doesn't matter if you have me as your mentor or if you have um, someone that you're shadowing. These are the things you can't get to this phase until you work with someone who has been doing it for, for a long time or who has helped other people do it. Okay, so just know that it's very hard. I mean, I think you can get here on your own, but it takes way longer, right? A mentor just collapses that time it would have taken. So even if it takes you a year to get to this phase, that's one year versus five years. Because I've seen even people in 10 years in this industry still undercharging. So it's a very real thing, okay? So the first thing a lot of that we see in the building phase is this is where a lot of the success happens, right? You start booking events every month. And if it's not every month, it's like every other month, right? Like, or every other week. Like, it's it's a little sporadic, but you're getting a lot of flow into your business. A lot of inquiries are coming in. A lot of bookings are coming in, right? Um, And at this phase, you're, you're not completely satisfied, okay? That is the big misconception. Everybody wants to have booked events. But I will tell you right now, right? This is where I help my designers in my um, group coaching program which is part of like a CEO, right? If you are interested, I'll leave some links down below. Um, the building phase where we go through is that they'll get the clients. They'll get the money. They'll get, if they show up and do the work, they'll do that, right? They'll start getting booked almost every month, um, if not every month. And to be honest, it's not enough. It's not enough for them, right? Because the biggest misconception about money in a business is that the more you make the more you make right it stays in your pocket that's not true and if you stay until the end we'll talk about which where are the revenues for each of these phases and what is typical in the in the business when it comes down to making money okay so the next thing is more than likely um a designer who gets into this phase right is really wanting to charge higher prices at the end of the day this is what usually i see a lot um sometimes even coming into the phase and leaving out it's still the same thing they still want to charge more they still want to charge higher prices one because they do crave to work with higher end clientele right and this is the this is the phase where they're starting to kind of get into the scaling phase, but they're not there yet. But they know they they they're getting booked, right? The first one they're getting booked, but now they have they crave for higher end clientele, okay? And they have this mentality and mantra and belief or affirmation, whatever or prayer, whatever you want to believe in, right? To do less but make more. Because a lot of what happens is they're booking events every month, but they're doing a lot of work and it's exhausting. <laughs> it's so exhausting. And it comes to the point where you start to question whether or not you really want to do this full time, because if this is what it is, you're so burnt out, right? If you think about it, people in the event industry give up a lot of their weekends and a lot of their weekends is usually time spent with family and friends. And these are the things you want to be aware of when it comes to joining this industry, right? You have to sacrifice a lot of time spent usually on the weekends with family and friends to know that you're getting booked. And this is why like at this phase, they're at the point like with number four, they, they don't want to do more anymore, 
right? They want to do less, but they want to make more money. And this is a great indication when they're ready to scale because this is a very real thing. But compared to like the startup and foundations, they're just trying to get some events, right? Let me get to that point first before I decide that I want to do less and make more. Okay. And um, I will say this at the building phase of where I was with my balloon business, I was starting to realize that I was getting burnt out, right? And actually, and I'm going to be very honest, at this phase, I had to put my balloon business behind me because I was coaching people at the same time. But people were getting better results as me as a coach than I was for myself. So I started to realize that my gift is not in doing it. My gift is in teaching it. And it's always been my gift. That's why I wanted to be a teacher because I'm good at what I do when it comes to teaching. I can inspire and hold people accountable to their full potential, knowing that it can literally change someone's life, right? That's why I got a degree in education, okay? So I had to make a decision at this building phase. Something has to give, right? I had to, am I gonna continue to coach or am I gonna take my balloon business serious? And I decided to take my coaching serious, right? Because this serves way more people than it does when it comes down to my balloon business. Now, most of my event designers are not coaches, right? They're not at the stage of wanting to help just yet, okay? But they are struggling with marketing. And I will say this, I'm not, when I say struggling with marketing, it's not because they're not doing the work right? They're doing all the things, they're working, they're hustling their tails off to make this business work. That's why they're booking every month, okay? But they know they don't want the same clients. And I will say this, event designers tend to, and anyone, to be honest, in the human evolution, is that we crave to grow. We crave to be beyond being feeling stagnant. And when we feel stagnant, It's where comfort lives. And my creative people need to constantly grow in order to feel fulfilled. And it's a true craving. And it's something that will happen to you along your journey. Now, to get to this phase, like I said, you have to have a mentor, but it definitely helps when it comes to growing and then going into the next phase, which is my favorite when it comes to scaling your business. So These are the things that go on when it comes to the building phase. Like I said, this is usually when you do need a mentor. And if you would love to join my coaching program, I would love to get you at, you know, events every single month. And then we work on then scaling your business. Click some links down below. I got some resources for you. Okay, so we got the starting phase, the foundation phase, the building phase, right? Well, we have stopped on the journey into my favorite phase. (laughs) This is what we call the scaling phase. The scaling phase is probably one of my favorites. I'm going to share again why it's my favorite in the next clip. Scaling your business is going to be difficult on your own. And this is usually where there's a lot of dedication and time and energy of unlearning everything you learned from the other phase into where you want to go and grow the business, right? This is where you kind of start your generational wealth when it comes down to it. So this is one of my favorite phases. This is truly where I see a lot of my designers making a big difference, not only for their families and friends, but for their community in itself. So let me share my screen again and dive deep into the scaling phase. Okay, so my last phase of is my favorite phase, guys. Like this is where dreams come true this is where you can design your dreams into reality it's a very real thing um I used to say this and I was just you know getting started helping people and I didn't know where it would go and I used to always say like you know design your dreams into reality right well the scaling phase is when it happens building phase starts it but the scaling phase is like where the all the magic lives and it's amazing to be a part of when it comes down to watching my designers show up in this phase, and then completely take off. Okay, so in the scaling phase, um, we definitely, and I say we because you need, you cannot do this alone. I will tell you this, you cannot scale by yourself, okay? Every single millionaire, multimillionaire, billionaire has a mentor who can show them the way, okay? Every single one, Oprah, Bill Gates, um, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, all of them had somebody that they went to in order to get to where they wanted to go. Now, some people were innovative, but it took them a long time to get there, right? So if you want to collapse that time, 
make sure you find somebody who can get you to the scaling phase. All right. So the scaling phase, there's a total rebrand of your event business. It's because at this point in time, um, my designers and planners start to start wanting to plug luxury and high-end clients, right? This is where the money is. At the end of the day, your feelings about money, um, they definitely come up during this phase, right? Because we tend to stay, keep ourselves small and thinking we're not worthy of booking high-end clients, but it's, you can, right? So a rebranding happens and then starting to book your luxury clients is something that's the most fun. You know, one of my mentors said to, she's like, when people, when you're paid well, you show up different. And she's so right. Like when you are paid well, I show up, I show up different when I'm paid my worth. Okay. Whether it was with the balloon phase, um, balloon stay up uh, the balloon business or the me now as a coach and, you know, having private coaching clients, like these are the things that you want to make sure you're tending to because when my designers join me specifically in my coaching program to help with the scaling phase right we are looking to completely change what they learn from startup foundations and even building phase and we have to revamp everything you have to literally unlearn everything you learn to get to this point and change your entire belief system <laughs> it's it's a pretty big deal but this is what gets you forward okay another thing is um a lot of again a lot of my designers crave that high-end clientele. They know they want to work with them. They're at the point where they are no longer wanting to work with people they used to work with unless they're willing to pay higher prices. It's There's no shade, right? And you don't have to go to this phase if you don't want to. But a lot of my designers do because at the building phase, they can't leave their jobs, right? They can't leave their nine to fives. They can't retire their partners to join them. They can't move forward with their business and make this a financial, like have financial wealth or financial freedom, right? Or something to pass along that gives generational wealth. The scaling phase starts it, right? The scaling phase starts the process to build that generational wealth, that foundation to help your kids have, you know, wealth once you leave this world and pass it along to them. Okay, so this is why the high end clientele is a lot a goal of ours during this phase because it's a lot faster to get um your financial goals in quicker when you're starting to work with people who have a lot more money. Okay, another thing about this phase is that my designers need to grow their team. Right now, some people start to grow their team in the building phase, which is fine, right? But then we need to start really thinking about okay, we have to grow a team versus like just using utilizing you know some people who volunteer or people who you pay part-time like I'm talking like starting to think about like full-time people right paying yourself and really growing and having doing multiple events if you have to but you don't have to be there right you could be sipping a margarita on the beach somewhere or in the mountains doing a campfire and your business is still going without you right your team eventually at this stage and beyond is the driving force now of your business versus it being you. So this is usually where you have to become a leader and a true CEO of your business in order to get to that point. Like I told you, this is my favorite phase. I think there's going to be another phase after this, but I'll update you guys maybe in a year or two about whether or not there is another phase. I think there will be, okay? But this is just a great start when it comes to growing a team and start changing the clientele you serve. Okay, another way, another thing that happens in the scaling phase is that they start to build multiple streams of income. So a lot of my designers love to be creative. And at this point in time, or as they exit out of this phase is, and like I said, there might be another phase and I already have it in my head. I just haven't helped anyone just yet on that, um, but it's coming. <laughs> um, when they start to build their their phase and they're really starting to grow it, right? They're starting to think about how can I help someone else? right? Um, as you grow in your business, as you become richer and wealthier and your business keeps like making more and more tons of money, like tons of money. I'm talking about millions, right? At this point, you have to think about that your mission now is more than just growing money for you. Um, usually at the millionaire stages, right? Which is what I've seen in research is that a lot of people will want to help others, the big misconception that a lot of things happen is that people will want to start helping others in the building and foundations phase, 
That's not when you should start. You should start after the scaling phase, right? You need to grow your own and focus and really plant the seed and water it before you water anything else. And that's why I told you I had to make a decision on whether or not I was going to do balloons or I was going to be a coach. I had to choose one. And because I know this of the scaling phase, in order to grow something, you really have to nurture it. So I chose to help people because I was good at it. I already had proof, I had evidence, and I love what I do more than ever, right? So at the scaling phase, you have to do something you absolutely love. And this is where we grow your business. And this is at this phase, and I forgot to put it here, but this is where, you know, I used to tell everybody in the startup foundation and even in the building phase, you need to focus on one design, focus on one design, right? Sometimes going into the building phase, we kind of expand their designs, But in the scaling phase, it's no longer one design, right? Because again, we're growing your team and you need to offer more, okay? A lot of people do it different. Stop it. Stop it right now. (laughs) Do not do it all when you're in the startup, right? The only exception to the rule to that, and even then they still have to condense to their niche, is wedding planners or event planners, They're the only ones that technically speaking have to do an entire event, but even then they're not doing it all. They're just getting a lot of vendors to come into it and then they're expanding their lists. Okay. They're focusing on planning. That's what, so even event planners and wedding planners, they show up in the scaling phase a lot faster because they hone in on just planning. If they do decorate, they have other vendors that they work with, or they've already grown their team. Okay, I will say this, an event decorator or designer cannot grow their team in the startup phase. And maybe you can, but it will take a long time to grow your revenue. And that's where we're going to talk about next, because business is it's great to have the ideas. It's great to have the dreams. Right. But I want to make sure you understand how much money is coming in at each phase. All right. So we made it all four phases. And this is what it takes to dive into your event business what i want to dive deep into knowing that you know the phase but really what is the numbers behind the phases how much are people making within each phase so that way you have a realistic bird's eye view on what goes on and in the phase so that way you don't beat yourself up when it comes down to you feel like you're not making enough okay because i promise you're not alone with this remember these are averages that we're going to talk about and i want to make sure that you're able to understand that what you're going through is not something that's not typical it's actually very typical what people go through in each phase so let me share my screen again that way we can discuss the average revenue that goes on within each phase all right so the next thing I wanted to talk about is the average revenue that I see people um, achieve at each phase. So we have the phases right here, right? Starting foundation, building and scaling phase, right? And the revenue that I see on average per month within each phase, okay? So I left a little space right here, right? And I didn't put it there. However, if I was to extend this um, graph into the negative, I will say this, a lot of people at every stage, every phase of their business will spend their own money to grow their business or they'll borrow money or get loans. And that's where you go into the negative. However, we're just going to play an ideal world where you didn't spend money (laughs) just yet. Um, But you will, especially in the starting phase, this is where I see a lot of the negatives um, that happen. Like there's a lot of your own money and granted, you got to make money to to you gotta you gotta pay to play right um but in the starting phase i have a um diy course that i used to be a membership and this is where i teach you not to use your own money when you're first getting started so that way we get you in the pop, pop the zero right and then just growing up from there without using your own money so if you're interested again there'll be multiple resources below this video but let's get started so This is the average revenue that I see per month within each phase, right? In the starting phase, some people are at zero, like plain and simple, or they're in the negative because they've used their own money from their nine to five job, which they shouldn't be, to be honest. I have a way, and like I said, you know where to find it. (laughs) All right, so let's talk about an ideal person who bought that course, right? And even if it is, you're going to make the money back. So if you make the money back, then you're coming out of the negative. So this is why I said sometimes you do have to pay to play, but at the end of the day, if you're able to do make more money on top of your investment, the return of investment, which is your ROI, makes total sense, right? So sometimes people do have to invest 
a lot of money at first, but they make the money back and then 10 times that. So that's also something that happens as well. And if you're investing in your creative skill, that is not something I view as negative, right? Although it puts you in the hole for a little bit, it will make, you will make the money back and any kind of investment in a mentor. So the starting phase on average, they're only hitting a couple of hundred dollars per month, right? If, and, and I will say this, a big misconception about getting consistent, you know, money is that. It will happen every month. And, and that's a hard thing to have um, to wrap your head around, especially with every phase, right? And we'll talk about that. So in the starting phase, on average, if we put 12 months out of the year and we average how many clients you had and how much revenue came into the door. And whenever I mean revenue, it's just how much did you charge the client? And that's it, right? There's no profit in this. So just know if you're charging right? $500, you're not profiting $500. The only people who might profit 500 or above is planners, right? If they only do planning, if they don't do nothing else, right? But even then their profit's still a little taken away because they have to meet and they have to go to all these places. They, you know, might buy gifts for their clients or whatever. So in the starting phase on average is between zero and $500, for um the average revenue that's coming in per not per design but just on average right so sometimes they'll make 300 one month sometimes they'll hit the five a little over five but either way around this range is where usually you're starting to make now in the starter phase can someone go from zero to ten thousand i mean anything's possible right anything's possible but this is just what on average what i see in the foundations phase right here is when remember you're starting to get a little bit of clients in the door and even charging your worth, right? I've seen a lot of people like, I remember I went on live one time and I was like, hey, what's the highest design you've charged? And a lot of them were like a thousand. I was like, what? Y'all are better than me. I was charging $75 for my designs <laughs> when I first started. So this basically kind of doubles um, when it comes down to the average revenue per month. Um, I would say um, the reason why I kind of chose it a little below 2000 is because I usually see like 1500, um, 500 to 1500. But like I said, you can go from start from zero and go all the way through, right? It's, it's literally by luck and that's what happens. Kudos to you and I praise you, right? You get all the flowers. Okay, so the foundation phase is really like, to that five fifteen hundred, maybe two thousand, you might hit it. Um, but it's just very few clients. Again, you're charging your worth, but you're hitting a lot of rejection, and you don't know why. The building phase. Um, let's say for instance, you're coming from the foundation phase, right? You come from that fifteen hundred dollars. Well, now you're gonna over, over. You're gonna go over two thousand, and it's gonna be a little more consistent. So you'll average between two to five thousand dollars per month. This is usually typical in my group coaching program. A lot of my designers will average this per month. Now, like I said, it goes up and down in business, right? Sometimes you'll hit a thousand dollars, and then another time you'll hit three to four thousand dollars, and that technically averages between two to five k. Okay, so just know that's something that you have to really wrap your head around when it comes to building a business. And remember, the two to five thousand dollars is not profit. This is not money that you just keep in your business. Most of the time, my designers are reinvesting back into the business, so they don't even see this, which means they have to have another steady stream of income, which is usually their job or their partner's job to sustain the bills and you know their family stuff. So this is a lot what happens when it comes down to the building phase. And this is usually when they're just tired of it, like they're tired of doing so much and then not making a lot of profit. So like I said, the startup people are not gonna complain about that because they don't even know what that is to feel like to have a $5,000 a month, right? That's what their goal is. But my people in the building phase, they know who they are. And if you're ever in this phase, right, it just is you're doing so much and you want something more because it has to make sense. And like I said, this scaling phase is my favorite phase to go through. Right. This is where a lot of my designers will come in or planners will come in to, like in that five to eight, maybe. Right. But they sh shoot up. 
Okay, and when they're almost done in the scaling phase, they're hitting their 10K months or even 15K, right? And striving for that 20K. Because as CEOs, I will tell you, you're always going to want more. <laughs> you're always going to want more, okay? Because at this point in time, when you're growing your team, remember, just because $10,000 is coming into the business does not mean that's your salary, right? At this point, you have to have a team. So you got to pay for them. That becomes an expense and that eats away at your profit. Okay, so although you're making way more money, again, you finally might have two to five thousand dollars in your pocket versus at zero um, where you used to be in the building phase. So, like I said, each phase has its own average revenue. Scaling phase is obviously everybody's favorite because the more you make, the, the you're just a different person, right? You're a different person at each phase, but the scaling phase is where the real, like you are really designing your Jesus to reality. As corny and cliche I sound, <laughs> with my own little, you know, little slogan or lo whatever it's called, that at this point in time in your business, the scaling phase is where a lot of my designers strive to. And like I said, I think there's going to be another phase, um, but I'm not there yet. But I do foresee going past like, all right, what happens if we do make over 20K? What what next, right? And when we get to that point, let me know, right? <laughs> Come holler at me so we can grow together, okay? All right, so this is all the average revenues. I hope this was definitely helpful because this really puts a number into the phases to ensuring that you're understanding what goes on in each phase and what to expect. Can you jump between phases? Yes, you can even go backwards to each phase, right? But the more knowledge you know as you grow, the faster it is to get back to where you started or where you last left off. Now that we've gone through all the phases of your business and the average revenue that you should expect within each phase i wanted to give a bonus tip for you when it comes down to each phase of your business there are going to be different numbers that correlate with each phase for instance the number of inquiries that go on in a startup phase versus a scaling phase can be very different you can actually get the same number of inquiries and have a different type of client coming in the door so if you need more inquiries to get started, you should definitely watch this video right here because I show you ways on how to boost your inquiries for your event business. That way you're able to get more clients in the door because it's a numbers game within this industry. I hope you guys design your dreams into reality and I'll catch you guys in this video. Bye. Cheers to you and each phase of your business because it's an amazing journey and enjoy it while you can.